Welcome everybody to another video. We're going to be talking about the balance changes for Age of Sigmar. Now, I'm not going to go into every single faction because I just don't know them well enough in order to comment on the changes, but we will go over some major things as well as, you know, the factions that I'm more familiar with. So let's get into it. And by the way, this is a no cam video because I don't have my camera set up in my new apartment yet. Uh, and this new office, I got to do something with the lighting because it's a really, really dim light that's installed and there's no kind of switch to make it brighter. I think it's more like what the light, the kind of like the fixture that the light's encased in. Uh, either way, I'll figure that out and I'll be back on cam uh, soon enough. So let's first talk about some of the general changes to the game because this is one of the most important things. And so the manifestations have been out of control. That's what I've been hearing online, what we've been seeing repeated all over the place. I myself did not know because I had not played really with manifestations yet just because I don't own them yet. I'm a new player, right? And so that's kind of, you know, something that you a lot of experienced players were going right into, but maybe not everybody was getting experience with these. But either way, there's some significant changes. First of all, if you remove a man manifestation from play, it cannot be summoned again in the same turn. So the way that could maybe happen is some people were like, you know, banishing their own manifestations, uh, you know, to resummon them in a different place if they were not mobile or if they just didn't want them in a certain area of the map. Uh, but also, if you banished your opponent's manifestation, then at the end of your hero phase, they could actually, you know, use their, um, oh man, they, you know, they could cast a spell at the end of your hero phase and they could summon back that manifestation all over again. And because of the timing of that command, uh, you wouldn't actually be able to counter it or, or like deal with it until later on in the game. And so that was kind of a devastating way to play and it's gone now. And so uh, at least in that context where it's removed, people can still summon a, ban or, uh, a manifestation at the end of your hero phase, but they can't do it if you've just finished removing it. So less feel bad moments there. They also have uh, the banish, banish manifestation uh, to, you get to add one roll uh, for every additional manifestation on the battlefield after the first. And so that basically means the more manifestations your opponent is playing, the easier it is to banish them. So they have to do that at their own risk. And so that will particularly, you know, work better against armies that don't have as much, you know, spell casting, so they can't banish as often, then you could you know, summon a few extra because you know they're not going to get very many chances to remove it. But if you're going against a casting heavy army, then they can likely, you know, banish a few manifestations. So there also were some changes to wild forms. Well, really, it's been removed from multiple manifestations. And so wild form, if something were to be banished, instead it would just take six damage. That's gone from the purple son of Shaiish and also from Ravenex gnashing jaws. And what that means is it's just easier to remove them. You can just banish them outright uh, without actually having to, you know, do it multiple times to get the effect of killing it. Now, we also have a point uh, casting value increase for the suffocating grave tide. Uh, and then also they made this morbid de detonation for the malevolent uh, maelstrom mandatory. So basically, you know, you can't wait to blow it up at the exact right time. If it hits those six points, it is blowing up and that thing is friendly fire. So it can hit your own units and you really, it increases the skill kind of cap on how to play that properly. So we also saw the honor guard being like a massive way to pump up your shooting and really that's just not what it's intended for uh, to just make shooting really easy and, and powerful like that's kind of a lame way you know especially not everyone has access to shooting or you know it's just too oppressive in terms of having some really powerful shooting attacks and so they've changed that now uh, when you have the honor guard uh, I guess it is. Oh, where does it say down here? Okay, so basically the hit and wound bonus, the plus one uh, to hit and wound is only against the honor guard and the enemy general, but not the entire regiment. It's only within 12 inches, which means that you can't do it from super far away for shooting. Now, if they are within 12 inches and you have 12 inches shooting or, or like, you know, you have longer, but they're close, you could still use it for shooting, but it's negating that, you know, sniping from across the map uh, with a heavy shooting army uh, to take advantage of that general hands book, uh, you know, rule. So, okay, otherwise, uh, there's just some stuff about piling in with terrain rules uh, and 
again, it's not something that I know like well enough to comment on, so I'm not going to, uh, but they also mentioned that for auto defense, you can use it when somebody uses covering fire. Now, I didn't actually know you couldn't do that, so there you go. Okay, so for the balance updates, again, let's just talk about the ones that I'm familiar with because otherwise I'd be talking out of my ass. So Free Guild Fusiliers, this is really, really, really good. This update is massive. So basically, when you were in fortified position, then you would use the fortified profile. And the problem with that is that it didn't have shoot in combat. So you could be in fortified position and get charged and you might think like, great, I have you know, a little bit of extra defense from fortified position, but now I'm using my bayonets and I'm super weak. It's not as fun. Now you get the defensive benefit of being in fortified position. However, you also get the benefit of being able to use the shooting combat of the lesser, you know, the one less shot kind of mobile, mobile uh, fusil cannon shot that you can use. It's a different profile, not as strong as the fortified one. Uh, and that's for a reason. It is a big buff for the fusiliers. Super happy to see that. I'll also talk about Lumineth. So I think one of the big things was that with a lot of different factions having a lower chance to hit now, uh, that having a negative one to hit effect is just so powerful. And so now if a unit charged, they don't get Shining Company. And if they used Power of Hish, which makes their crits on fives, uh, then they don't get the Shining Company. And so that seems fair. They tuned it a little bit. You still get it most of the time and you don't get it when you're being aggressive with your units. And that seems kind of like a good trade-off, especially because the Power of Hish and Shining Company aren't meant to be used together. I think that was always the intent. So this has just clarified it, you know, a little bit more. So otherwise, uh, I will say there's some buffs for Sylvaneth, which I've heard are pretty important because Sylvaneth had a huge, you know, part of their playstyle is to set up Wildwoods, teleport, heal, do all these things. Uh, and Wildwoods were way too hard to set up. They were way too easy to kill. And so those things are being improved. So really cool here. They do mention that Lumineth Realm Lords was a focus for them because it had a higher win rate. And we'll see later that this is also affected in the points. And they actually say down the line with the Hurricane units, they would look at doing future, you know, more adjustments, uh, which is sad for me, but good for all of you. Uh, and then also they mentioned Sylvaneth because Sylvaneth wasn't very good. So we go over to Chaos and you might notice not... Uh, not every faction's here. So Skaven's not here. It just came out, obviously, the Battle Tome, so they felt pretty good about it. And also the, I mean, well, I mean, you have to think about how early the Battle Tome must have been printed that, you know, they well could have changes in mind, but didn't want to do it right away. But either way, Slaves to Darkness is also not here. The big thing to point out here is that the Hedonites of Slaanesh finally got some justice for their temptation dice. So if an opponent rolls a one or a two, they must replace their roll with that value instead, uh, instead of a six. Uh, and they also allocate D3 damage points. So now it makes a lot of sense to give out temptation dice because there is a full on consequence to actually using them. This is so thematic and cool. I really love it. They also made it so that the, uh, the word flame and the you know, some of the burning effects are a little bit easier to use with against manifestations and some other features. Uh, and then the maggot kin of Nurgle are now able to spread their disease more easily. And all of that, again, is on brand, on theme, and it makes sense. Okay, the death adjustments are a really big deal, uh, specifically for Night Haunt. And it's all down to this one really big line here, which is there's no escape. This ability only affects one friendly unit. So this was a big deal because Night Haunt was the most winningest list or, or army in the entire game. And the battle formation uh, was just too strong. Uh, and so now it only affects a single unit. Uh, basically, it affects their ability to, to charge and retreat and do all of that repeatedly in, in, in combat phase. If they're sorry, if they're already in combat, and that's now toned down a whole lot. And that uh, seems like really good. It's, what's interesting is that this is what most people were recommending online. Is what they'd like to see is it affect only one unit rather than the entire army. 
We also saw Kragnos get a point reduction, which is pretty interesting, uh, but they made his End of Empires ability only happen in your charge phase and not your opponent's charge phase because they said it was countering charges too easily. Otherwise, there's not a lot of big changes uh, for destruction, at least none that I know the implications of. All right, so the next part are the battle profile rules updates, uh, specifically in terms of points. And so what we're looking at here are some point changes. And so for Cities of Sigmar, really nothing major here. It's basically entirely uh, elf, kind of dark elf units and changes with some ex uh, some exceptions. So there's some dwarf stuff, the gyro bombers and copters, the uh, flagellants. Uh, but then when we look down here, you know, we've got the Scourge Runner, the War Hydra, the uh, Charib Charibdis. Uh, and then I guess, yeah, there's the human Luminarch of Hish, but none of these are the new models. Like, so the new models have stayed the same. The, the stuff that most people are playing with, which is would be the newest uh, range, not really affected. One thing that people were surprised by is that uh, Toll's Companions, not this version, uh, but the, the version uh, uh, that you can take as a Regiment of Renown, uh, Renown is not adjusted because it's being used like crazy for, you know, just its incredible value that it gets in other factions that are not Cities of Sigmar. Uh, so otherwise, there's all these changes that you can look at. A lot of factions have a lot of green, so they just have decreases to make them easier to play and easier to list build, although it doesn't affect, you know, there's no changes to the actual regiment options, just the prices that we're seeing here. Uh, like you see here again, green, all green, Karajan, all green, Lumineth. Okay, so this is where we're seeing an actual change here. So we can see that the, the Lumineth units that were not being used uh, got decreased. So Cathaler, the Wind Mage, uh, although people did use a bit of the Wind Mage, but it wasn't the main part of the Hurricane you know, formation that people were using. The Lore Seeker was used, I saw, by some people, but again, the Enlightener was the big one. So Enlightener got increased. The Caligrave, another huge, huge consideration because it had that auto cast for manifestations increased. And then when we go down to the actual units here, we can see the Hurricane stuff is massively impacted. The Blade Lords got increased. The Dawn Riders increased by 20, uh, which is a huge bummer because I have two units of them, but I'm still going to run them. The uh, Idrillin River Blades, which became a hero hunting battle tact tactic completing unit, has also been, uh, you know, increased 20 points. The only decrease on the unit side is the Star Shard Ballista, which I'm all for because I have one and I plan to use it because it just looks really cool. So, kind of excited to look at that or to use that it actually buys me one dawn rider you know in terms of if i was already going to use both of those things kind of like pays off one of my dawn riders increase by having that decrease there so my list won't change as much seraphon had kind of a mix where again like there's something great like lord croak getting decreased but then you know the other decreases are kind of the lesser used units from what i understand and the increases are on like the Scar Veteran and the Starseer and then big time specifically on the Agridon Lancers, which are just a really very powerful cavalry. And so they've been increased by 10 to make them a little bit harder to build into a list, at least build so many of them into a list. We can see that, you know, Stormcast had some small changes. Lots of green. I'm going to go a little bit faster until we get to something uh, more significant. I guess, I mean, oh my goodness, Blades of Corn just across their board, their whole army getting decreased. Zinch mostly getting decreased, except for Lord of Change, because that's been their one banger unit that's been making a huge difference. So we can keep going. Nurgle with massive changes 20, negative 20, negative 10, uh, you know, negative 30. Big, big changes. Skaven, a little bit, not a big deal though. Okay, Slaves to Darkness. Now, this is really interesting because Bellacor is kind of emerging as an MVP hero in the entire Age of Sigmar 4. Uh, people are talking about it a lot, uh, and I've played against it myself to see. It is a very, very powerful sculpt slash terror to me and many others. And so they increased it by 30. I think that kind of makes sense. Demon Priest got increased, but we have a lot of decreases here uh, and I think it's pretty interesting um, that if you want to take your Bellacor, well, well, if you want to take the Eternus with him, he got decreased. 
So that's a little bit of a help there. And some of the Dark Oath stuff was decreased as well uh, on both sides here. The Chariot got decreased again. It's it's just not a good unit from what I understand. From what I've, pl I've played with it now in Spearhead, it's not great. But otherwise, things look the same. Uh, and then there's a few other changes down here. But, oh, sorry, the one other one we should mention is the Varengard. Staple, very powerful, has gone up by 10. I guess that's fine. Okay, Flesh Eater Quartz, nothing significant. Those are pretty small numbers. Night Haunt, we would think there would be some increases. And yes, there are. There's four different models that are getting increased. And you can bet they knew that from the data, those are the ones that were being played. And that these ones that got decreased are the ones that weren't being played. Uh, and then OCR full decreases across the board. Soul Blight mostly decreases and quite a few and quite a few that are 20 and up, which is really interesting. Uh, and then uh, nothing to the Bone Splitters. Very, oh, you know what? The Gloom Spite, I hadn't looked at the glo Gloom Spite yet. There's actually a pretty significant changes, including, uh, you know, some actual increases because I did hear that Trogoth based things were being a little bit too, you know, pushed. And so you could see Rock uh, Gut Trogoths and the Fellwater Trogoths uh, and Trug, Skagrot, uh, not a Trogoth, but just a leader for them. And the Dankhold Trog Boss all increased. So that kind of makes sense. Iron Jaws with some massive decreases here uh, to a huge amount of their range tells you how they're doing in the meta. Same thing with the Cruel Boys, they got lots of decreases. And the Ogres, which again was a pretty popular army for some, you know, well, well performing lists, had various results here. And the big one is that those Gluttons that people were just packing into armies have been increased by 30. So really reducing uh, your potential to play, you know, more than a few units of them or if you do you're gonna to have to cut something somewhere so otherwise tons of Bayamap, map nothing there because kragnos was everybody and that's kind of where we're at that's that's as far as we're gonna go all right so that's gonna wrap up this video i hope you enjoyed going through the balance changes with me i know i'm not providing a terribly you know involved amount of insight into this but it is fun to just kind of go through the news with you all so i'll be back hopefully soon with some actual you know new content uh, but again i just moved my house is or apartment is still in disarray and i'm going through one of the busiest intros to school that i've had in a long time and so there's all sorts of factors there but doesn't matter i still really want to get back into some videos and i will hopefully have those for you as soon as possible so thanks for watching this one if you made it this far appreciate you uh let me know in the comments what you think about the changes and how your army's been affected and otherwise we'll see you again soon enough